We have several videos to go, but I want to tell you that we've finished the heavy lifting for this chapter in terms of chemistry. From now on, we're going to be talking about a variety of other molecules that are less important than the things we've already covered. I want to just, again, go over the idea that lipids have a number of different functions. They are fuel, like triacylglycerols. They are membranes, that is, sphingolipids and glycerophospholipids. And now we want to talk about the last two categories, things like steroids and hormones and vitamins. So let's take a look on the next page and reflect where these things are. Steroids are down here. They are typically seen in the polar lipids, but not always. Sometimes they uh, can be completely nonpolar. And we're going to talk also about terpenes eventually here and cholesterol esters. These are in the nonpolar lipid sections. But as you can see, we don't have much left to cover. So let's move ahead and take a look at this page where we introduce the idea of steroids. Steroids are rigid four-member ring systems. Let's make a note of that. Rigid four ring systems. The four rings are fused together. We would say that all steroids have the exact same core structure of those four, that is uh, A, B, C, and D, in a bit of a zigzag or staggered fashion. Note A, B, and C are all six membered rings, and D is a five membered ring. That's pretty much it for the core of all steroids. You're going to have a lot of bells and whistles on different steroids, of which there are hundreds of different ones in your body and thousands in nature. And it's going to be those other parts that are attached to these four rings that make each steroid different structurally and therefore having different functions. Now, this particular steroid is probably the most important one for a number of reasons. Let's go through its structure first and tell you a little more about it. This particular steroid has a standard steroid core, and the steroid core is always a rigid ring system, as I just mentioned earlier. But this one has a bit of a floppy tail up here. A little more floppy like a fatty acid would be, although in this case we have some branch uh, to this chain, unlike a fatty acid. So we've got a bit of a mixture of um, floppy and rigid here, but it's all very nonpolar, except for the very head group over here. There's a very small polar head, barely polar, not even charged. Nonetheless, we would say that this particular molecule with a slightly polar head and a long nonpolar tail is slightly amphipathic. And we taught you earlier to say that when we say amphipathic, we typically mean a membrane component. And that's true of this molecule. This molecule is called cholesterol. We get cholesterol from our diet, but we can also make it in our body. But cholesterol is a membrane component, and we would not be able to live without cholesterol, even though if we get too much of it, it can kill us by clogging up our arteries. What is cholesterol's job in the membranes? It inserts in the membranes and I'm going to use the term plasticize. It inserts in the membranes and plasticizes them. What does that mean? Well, in one sense, it means it loosens them up. And this rigid, bulky, um, nonpolar molecule with some elbows, uh, methyl groups sticking out here, it's going to get in and keep membranes from getting too rigidified and too packed together. But also, it's going to prevent them from getting too loose as well. So uh, the rigid nature of the cholesterol molecule keeps things from getting too liquidy. So it causes them to be uh, flexible, but strong. I mean, think of like uh, a rubber balloon. 
Um, the rubber balloon, you can stretch it and uh, it's very strong. Uh, it's mobile, but you can't break it very easily. That's what we want for membranes. Good movement, but good strength. And that's what cholesterol helps to do to membranes. So that's pretty much all we need to know about cholesterol. You don't need to memorize the structure. I would like you to know the core properties of that steroid ring system, maybe be able to recognize it, but just know that cholesterol is amphipathic and its job is to loosen up and also strengthen membranes. Now it turns out, interestingly enough, that cholesterol has to be transported around in our body. And we never like to transport amphipathic molecules in our blood because they tend to form things that are like membranes or micelles. Now, we said the same thing for fatty acids. They're amphipathic, and we don't want to have amphipathic molecules uh, stored or transported as amphipathic molecules. And what we did with those uh, fatty acids is we capped them off in order to make them all nonpolar. And we're going to do the same thing with cholesterol. Uh, this form of cholesterol is the storage and transport form. And I want you to pause the video for a moment here. And I want you to look at this molecule and tell us what the two components are and how those two components are linked together. This is good practice for our components and linkages part of this chapter. Okay, I really hope you're taking the time to practice these things. This is cholesterol. It has an alcohol head group. And maybe you would also recognize that this is a fatty acid. We can use any fatty acid to attach to the head group of cholesterol. What about the linkage? Do you recognize it? It's going to be COC double bond O. That is an ester. And we call this a cholesterol ester. And a cholesterol ester, or sometimes I just call it a CE, is what we have shown here. And the key is that it is all nonpolar. And I'll just make a note that that's good for storage without water. That is, if you're going to store cholesterol away for long term, you don't want to have any water associated with it. And if you had polar head groups, you would need water. But if we make this molecule all nonpolar, or at least predominantly nonpolar, no charges, very little hydrogen bonding capacity, you don't need water, and you can store a lot of it away without extra weight. That's the end of our cholesterol, but it's not the end of steroids. On the next page, we're going to talk about other steroids, and we'll pick it up there.